Oceana's next. So we snuck this one in really. It's a fishing company. It's based down in the Cape and it has an operation in both the deep sea uh, fishing, like for hake and stuff like that, as well as the onshore and close stuff, which is things like pilchards and so on. And they own that Lucky Star brand people will be very familiar with. Remember too, though, that they have a US operation. That's the Daybrook fishing operation, which fishes some little oily fish out of the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, and the reason we're talking about it today is that it owns a business called CCS, which is the largest cold storage distributor in the country. Although I'm surprised by that because I always thought the rainbow operation would be as big or bigger. Market capitalization 15.0 billion rand, price to earnings ratio 18.66, dividend yield 3.34. These guys have operated well in recent years. Eh? They have, um, and I think this recent acquisition of Daybrook um, mm. just shows you that they'll constantly be looking for a deal. Because they got into that early, yeah. when the rand was stronger relative to the dollar back yeah. in so two years ago. Yeah, 18 months ago, yeah. uh, so definitely benefited from, from some rand weakness. Yeah. Um, but I don't know, it's, it's quite difficult for me to get excited about a, a fishing operation. Mm. I'm not sure what your feelings are. Well, we actually own a few of these. We like the fact that the Daybrook operation, when I said it's an oily fish, that's relevant because they actually manufacture omega-3 oils, sure. which gets used sure. in the you know, tablets and um, capsules that people take. And that fish, for some reason or another, is very plentiful. So there sure. isn't like a total allowable catch. There's a fishing season because you can't sure. fish them when they're busy breeding or something. Yep. But um, you can take out a, a lot. <laughs> Not sounding very <laughs> environmentally <laughs> PC here. The local business though, I mean, the Lucky Star brand has sold well, but you're right, fishing per se looks a bit dodgy long term because the fish is a tapped out resource. Yeah, I mean, we're constantly hearing about um, the harvesting of fish and what mm. impact it is having and how uh, the stockpiles are reducing. So, yeah. I mean, that's just one of the questions I have. I mean, what happens if you have a bad harvesting season? Um, I mean, they're pretty much only harvesting uh, in Southern Africa. Yeah, look, they're an empowered company. They have Tiger Brands, owns 40% sure. of the shares. Because of the various partnerships they've got, they get quite a lot of the total allowable catch of quite a lot of the stuff. They also have that shrimp and, uh, you the know, lobster, business. lobster businesses out in the St. Francis Bay and other areas. So they got good links all over the show. Let's go to the graph. Uh, you can see it's doing fine. It's really doing fine and it's benefiting from the Daybrook transaction, which is that lift off that happened in 2014. The cold storage and distribution business, interestingly, they sold their potato chip manufacturing business to famous brands that we'll talk about in a That's little while. So that indicates that they are open to optimization of their assets. Sure. Look, I'm going to lean hot on this one, although it's a very small position in our current portfolio. Mm. And I'm not completely convinced that it's something to hold for posterity and forever in the transition to the new platform. So how are you leaning on it? Though? I'm not as convinced, um, mm. so I'm not going hot. You're going to go not hot. Okay, I'm going to call it hot and then we'll decide in the course of the show what to do about that holding.